Hi, my name is Vivid, and this is going to be my attempt at beating a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Moon using only shiny Steel types. Steel type Pokemon are the embodiment of the best offense is a good defense. With all of their resistances, they can seem impenetrable. I mean, they are literally covered in armor, and I want to put them to the test. Also, yes, you definitely heard me correctly. This will be a shiny only run, meaning I will have to shiny hunt for every single one of my encounters. You should know that I bumped up the odds slightly because I want to beat this game before Ash turns 11. Before we jump in, please consider leaving a like on the video if you enjoy the effort that goes into them, and if you haven't already, you should consider subscribing. We just hit 50k, so thank you so much for that, and I am stoked for the next 50 because 100k is the only goal I've ever had on YouTube. Also, let me know your favorite steel type in the comments down below. Mine has to be Jirachi because he's a motherfucking star boy. Okay, let's do this. We start off the run by admiring Kakui's hot professor bod since he never wears a shirt under his lab coat, then we speed run through the rest of the intro nonsense because it literally does not matter. Once we can make our way into the trainer school area, we hunt for and finally find our actual starter, a shiny Magnemite. I picked Rowlet from the original three because it should theoretically make the game harder, but now we can throw that little owl away and start using a literal magnet. I catch them and name them Envy. As always, my nicknames have a theme to them, and I'm pretty sure I've used this one before in the past, but I'm re-watching the show so it's on my mind. If you know the theme, let me know in the comments down below. Good luck. Envy has a neutral nature, which is fine, but they also have the ability Sturdy, which is great, since it will almost always stop them from getting one shot, which will be massively important since this is a hardcore Nuzlocke. And now seems as good a time as any, so if you don't know the rules, they're on screen right now, but in short, in addition to standard Nuzlocke rules, I can't overlevel past the next trial or elite form member, I can't use items in battle, and I have to play on set mode. This magnet should make pivoting around easier later on, which is super valuable for a challenge like this. We can now finish the trainer school by challenging Principal Emily, but after challenging her, I realize I forgot to heal Envy first. So we chip down her dull magnet with our shiny one and are left with just 10 HP. She then sends out her Alolan Meowth and since we never outspeed this kitten, it's looking like a reset. That is, if Envy didn't clutch a Thundershock Paralysis and casually land a high roll Thundershock on the next turn to take it out. Nothing like winning a battle you should have lost to really set the tone for a run. It's such a great feeling, and really the only thing I can think of more exciting would be getting a new computer, which thankfully Apex, the sponsor of today's video, can help you with. Let me thank them really quick. So I've teamed up with Apex Gaming PCs and we are bringing you the Apex in Vivid Color collaboration line. They asked me what case I wanted my PCs to be built in, and of course, I picked the one with the most vivid colors for obvious reasons. So right now, if you click my custom link in the description down below or in the pinned comment, you will find three different builds, the Great, Ultra, and Master, each one at different price points, and the one you pick depends on what you need out of a machine. Each tier comes with frame rate guarantees for some of the most popular games, so whether you're trying to gun down noobs, mine diamonds, or I don't know, maybe do something crazy like record Pokemon videos and upload them to YouTube, there is a PC for you. Each tier is customizable, each PC is upgradable, and there are financing options so you don't have to pay the entire cost at once. And the best part, if you click my custom link and type in code VIVID at checkout, you can save up to $250 on your next PC. So what are you waiting for? Click the link, go browse the PCs, and see if one is right for you. Thank you Apex for sponsoring this video and helping me to continue to make content. We then head straight to Howley City where we can use the island scan feature to hunt our next encounter. I have to save and reset the scan several times, but eventually we find a shiny clink. I catch them and name them Alphonse. These island scan encounters are really a game changer for a Lolan Nuzlocke runs, and I love it. Ilima will be our first real challenge since we hacked Emily to death, and his Smeargle is just always so good at this point in the game, and it will have Ember since I technically chose Rowlet as my starter. So after a lot of planning, this is what I came up with. We lead Envy into his Young Goose and paralyze it on turn one with Thunder Wave, and get ultra lucky as it gets fully paralyzed. On the next turn, Envy miraculously lands a Supersonic confusing the Goose as Ilima heals its paralysis with a full heal. We re-paralyze it and then proceed to hax it to death between confusion and full paras. Smeargle comes out next and Envy takes a strong ember for about 40% of their HP, but we once again set up the defensive layers of paralysis and confusion, which is enough to eventually wear down this Picasso wannabe with our magnet and then our gears. So that was actually kind of a challenging battle and we had to get lucky there, but I'm sure we will breeze through the rest of this game with our overpowered steel types. Don't worry, this isn't foreshadowing anything, nothing is going to go wrong for the rest of the run, I promise. 
With Ilima beaten, we can now enter the Verdant Cavern and take on our first island trial, and I would like to point out here that both of my Pokemon are level 12 at the time of entering this cave, which is when I end the level cap. I will level up inside here because we have to fight like three rats and some team skull goons, so I don't want to hear it in the comments. Experience management is close to impossible in the early game for the Alola region, and especially so when your team is so small. So I alleviate the issue by ending the level cap at the start of a trial, kind of like it would end at the start of a gym battle. I just felt I needed to point that out. Don't come for me in the comments. So we go through the cave and murk some smaller rats and then we have to fight a really chonky rat. I lead off with Envy who takes a tail whip on the first turn and in return paralyzes Thickums with a thunder wave. It calls in its smaller rat friend and on the next turn Envy thundershocks for about 20% and takes another tail whip in a scary face, meaning their stats are shredded. I switch Envy into Alphonse and then start going for vice grips, eventually dropping the Raticate's health to the yellow. And after Alphonse has taken too many hits, I switch back into Envy who still has their sturdy intact and take out both rats with a couple of thundershocks. Pretty clean first trial, honestly. With the Verdant Cavern fully unlocked, we can now catch Pokemon here, so I spend a few hours watching Papa C videos until I finally find a shiny Alolan Diglett. This was probably the second strangest Alolan form behind the walking palm tree in my opinion, but I am stoked to try out this little mole. I name her Azumi, and she will be the last team member we get for a while. I have to fight Hao after saving Lily's bag goblin, but he's kind of a breeze at this point in the game, so we'll skip it. Now it's time for for our first grand trial fight against Hala, and he uses only fighting types. While you might think the fight would be really hard for us, you would be absolutely correct. This was impossible. Here is my first attempt. Azumi lands a magnitude 8 on his Mankey and clutches the one shot, but then Crabrawler comes out and it's essentially checkmate from here. This crab destroys my entire team and it's a wipe. I really thought my team would be able to do more here and honestly I was completely blown away. So I did something I've never done before and I actually reset and tried the fight again with my same team just to see if I could come up with a different strategy. You might think this is kind of scummy, but I had legitimately no way to practice this fight and after the first attempt I felt like I really really needed some kind of insight into how it would go. So I tried again, and again, and again, and after the seventh time trying it and not once getting a win, I actually reset because I felt confident that I could do better. But let's just cut to the chase. I failed this battle from fresh saves over 20 times. Mind you, if I lost either my Magnemite or my Diglett in any attempt, I considered it a failure and a reset because both of those Pokemon are mandatory to have for other trials later. So the stakes were pretty high since my only expendable Pokemon was Alphonse, who is the worst Pokemon for this fight. Eventually, I realized my only option to to legitimately win this battle was to fully EV train my Pokemon on the early routes starting as soon as possible. I could reset them later if I needed to, so it had to be done. So let's just skip to attempt 24. This is the team I ended up with. The big difference are that Diglett is now named Maze Hughes since he's a guy and he has tangling hair instead of Sandvel. Each Pokemon is EV'd to be pretty bulky and outspeed where possible, but Maze EV spread specifically is a masterpiece. It not only ensures Clutch survives and outspeeds in this fight, but it's also also tailored for another trial you'll see later. Okay, so let's try this again. For attempt 24, I lead off with Envy into Hala's Mankey, as it's the best strategy I can come up with. A lot has to go right here, Karate Chop has to not crit, and Thunder Wave has to land. But both of those things happen, and Envy ends the first turn at around 75% HP thanks to a berry. On the next turn, a Supersonic thankfully lands, and the Mankey just hits itself in confusion, which is perfect. This is undoubtedly my best attempt yet. With our defensive layer set up, I switch into Maze, and the Mankey hits itself in confusion again, which I shouldn't have to tell you is fantastic. I use Z Growl to lower the Mankey's attack and raise my own defense, then I start setting up workups to raise Maze attack. Mankey breaks through and lands a Karate Chop for about a quarter of his health, and then on the next turn goes for a Focus Energy as Maze sets up another workup. Since Focus Energy makes Karate Chop always crit, I have to stop setting up early and just hope that the two workup boosts are enough. Maze spankies the Mankey on the next turn with a magnitude 8 bringing in the Crabrawler. Anything lower than a magnitude 8 will not KO and 8 is a roll at plus 2. I lock in and we get a magnitude 10 baby, the high roll of all high rolls. Crabrawler drops. This Pokemon has been the pressure point in each fight since it has power up punch and is EV'd to be super bulky but Maze took it out in one shot. Makuhita comes out next and then we get a magnitude 9 which is more than enough for the KO. I legitimately stood up for my chair, freaked out, and celebrated in this moment. I had not been this hard stuck on a challenge for a long time, and if you were wondering why it's been so long in between uploads, 
this is it. This singular fight took me around two weeks of planning, resets, theory crafting, and in the end, actual luck. But finally, we can move on. Before I leave Melee Melee Island, I go steal some food from a herd of wild munchlaxes. If you've watched any of my challenges before, you'll know that leftovers is my favorite item, and I will always use it if able. Now, we can finally hop on a boat and make our way to Akala Island. Dexio and Senna from the XY region show up randomly in challenges here, but surprise, they're just as insignificant in these games as they are in their home games, so we just absolutely gutter Senna. Then on our way to the first Akala trial, Hao challenges us, but he just has a Pikachu and a Breon at this point, so Maze and Envy deal with his team handedly. Akala Island is all about cramming in a ton though, so for a three-peat forced battle, we have to fight Gladion. But his team is just really bad at hitting Steel types, so we're able to muscle through pretty easily. Now, finally, we can take on the next trial. In Ultra Sun and Moon, the Water Totem Pokemon is in Araquanid, and it is a brutally hard fight in my opinion. But in this game, it's a wishy-washy, which I think should be infinitely easier. So let's see. I lead off with Envy into the School of Fish and go for a light screen on turn one to cut its damage output in half as it just growls at me, which is a pretty poor play here. The big School of Fish calls in a tiny anchovy friend and I just start blasting away with Thundershocks while the School of Fish growls a second time. Then it soaks my magnet for some reason, but we avoid any potential rust and once the wishy-washy unschools, the rest of the battle is a breeze. Had this thing ever actually attacked me, it could have been much more difficult, but in general, I think it's fair to say that this fight is cake compared to the Iraq winded trial. Good job, Envy. Like I said, Akala is all about cramming things in, and the trials are back to back to back, so we head straight to the next one on a volcano. On paper, this trial should be a nightmare since it's the fire trial, and unlike the Ultra games that I'm so used to playing at this point, the totem Pokemon is a Salazzle, which should in theory outpace and one-shot my entire team. This is where that theory falls short though. Maze is actually a pretty fast little dude, and if you recall earlier, I said I gave him an optimal EV spread for both the Hollow fight and another trial down the road, which would be super important later. This is that trial. Let me break it down real quick. Important trainer battles in the Alola region all have EV trained Pokemon, but for some reason, the totem battles are not EV trained in the same way. So by giving Maze enough HP, defense, and speed, he was able to outpace and take hits from Hollow's Mankey after a Z Growl, but his speed EV and minimal attack EVs should also theoretically ensure that he'll always outpace and one-shot the Salazzle after he levels up to 23 fighting the Marowak and Magmar that come before it, because remember, I end level caps as soon as I start a trial. Okay, so that was a lot of explanation, here's the actual fight. We lead off with Maze into the Seductive Lizard, we outpace it, but unfortunately... No, 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 I'm just kidding. We Oko it. I knew after the Hollow fight that I had to be super prepared for this trial because I was not gonna reset from this point. So I did a ton of research and calcs before arriving on a final EV spread. With that potential nightmare out of the way, we have one more island trial before Akala's grand trial. So we head straight there, only stopping in to say hi to our good friend Gladion. Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Oh, okay, well, I'll just go f myself, I guess. The next trial is a grass trial, which sounds like it would be super easy for a team of steel types, but I'm still rocking all unevolved Pokemon, and Lorantis can actually call in a cast form who can absolutely rock my shit with sun powered weather balls. So I have to play kind of carefully here. We go on a scavenger hunt in the lush jungle, and after doing so, we summon this vegan bacon plant thing, and I lead off with envy and paralyze it on turn one while it just goes for an X scissor. It calls in a trumbeak, and I make the mistake of knocking the bird out because because now the plant has the ability to call in cast form. The silver lining of this is Envy levels up from the experience and learns metal sound. So I have them lower Lorantis' special defense until it calls in cast form, and from here, a few charge beams are enough to drop the cast form, and a mirror shot is enough to take out the Lorantis with its lowered stats. All in all, a pretty simple fight. We've now beaten every island trial on Akala, so we head to the Dimensional Research Lab to catch up with Kukui and his wife, but upon leaving to progress the story, the Alola region shows us it's Skyosi. Yes, I made this joke in my last Alola video. Yes, it's bad, but you all keep coming back, so clearly I'm doing something right. Also, Skyosi is just a funny word. It rolls right off the tongue. You should try saying it sometime. <laughs> anyway, the next stop is Koni Koni City, and making it to this part of the game unlocks a lot for us. First, we buy a shield fossil from Olivia's store, and then save in front of this nice man, and soft reset the game until he hands us a shiny shield on. This takes way too much time because 
soft reset hunts always suck, but eventually this little dude shines. I name him Greed and I add him to the team. He should be a really solid defensive pivot as long as we can dodge fighting and ground type attacks. Next, I head to the Akala outskirts where we can do another island scan hunt, which I thankfully only have to reset twice before finding a shiny Hone Edge. Now this is a Pokemon that can and will solo the entire game if he sticks around, so I name him Edward because he exudes main character energy. Finally, Maze evolves into Dugtrio, giving me my first fully evolved Pokemon just in time to take on Olivia. Now, I could make this fight difficult by using other Pokemon, but instead of doing that, I lead with Maze, raise his attack with a workup, and then proceed to absolutely mow her entire team down. This fight would never be hard because my Steel types just kind of wall Olivia, but Maze made it such a breeze. Alolan Duggy? actually kind of dope in my book. After smoking Olivia's pipe, we have to take a detour to the Aether Paradise, which I think is the happiest place on Earth. Not where anything sinister happens, no evil doing ever goes on here. I encounter this floating jellyfish here, and even though it's kind of a cutie, I send it back to the Shadow Realm, and now we can finally head to the third island. So I'm used to Ultra Sun and Moon, which will be a little bit of a theme in the later half of this game, and I get my first real curveball right now. In Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Hal asks you to battle, and you can decline that and then go change around your team, heal, use TMs, whatever. In the original Sun and Moon, he doesn't do that. He just forces you into a battle right away. This was an unpleasant surprise, and this is also the first fight where Hao's team is really scary, so it's not great that I didn't prepare. I lead off with Maze into his Alolan Raichu, which is accidentally perfect. It's in the front from taking out the Nihiligo, so on the first turn, a Sucker Punch lets Maze outspeed the Raichu and take it out before it can even move. Hao sends in a Flareon next for some reason, and a single bull Dose is enough to drop this fire kitten. Hao sends out his final Pokemon, Brion, and I know this thing is holding a Z Crystal, so I pivot into Greed to live the hit with Sturdy, but honestly, his defenses are so good that he just naturally lives a Hydro Vortex on 5 HP, which is insane. After a Protect to stall for a turn, I switch Greed out for Envy and set up a Light Screen. From this point, a Metal Sound to lower this Mermaid Seal thing special defense stat into a Charge Beam are enough to take it out, which is a massive relief. I should probably look ahead for what other changes there are between the games that I don't remember, but that would require not just charging ahead full speed, and you know it's all gas no brakes around here baby, so that's going to be a no from me. Immediately haunted by my decision to not do any research, I head to the electric trial, and you have to fight Moline here. Legitimately, you have to fight Moline here. This is not in the Ultra games at all. And also, his Pokemon are a higher level than the Totem Vicavolt I have to fight. I really did not know you had to fight this dude. And I'm not going to go turn by turn and cover the entire battle here, but just know that we get super lucky and switch in our Alolan Dug Trio into his Alolan Dug Trio when it was trying to go for a Sucker Punch. This lets Maze pick off his much duller Dug Trio, and Edward is strong enough to take out his last two Pokemon. That could have been super terrifying if we didn't get lucky here, because an Alolan Dug Trio could legitimately wipe my team. After beating Moline, Envy finally evolves into Magneton, which is dope, and while fighting the add-on Pokemon before Vicavolt, Greed also levels up and evolves into Bastiodon. Finally, we challenge the Totem Vicavolt, and between Greed and Maze, there was never really a chance here. We use Greed and his impenetrable defense stat early to soak up hits and chip the bug down, and once Greed got too low for comfort, Maze was able to easily come in and pick the rest of the fight apart with Rock Tombs, since he's either immune to or resists all of Vicavolt's attacks. Honestly, pretty easy fight, and not even a fraction as annoying as the Togedemaru trial from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now that our level cap has increased a bit, I feel comfortable in shiny hunting for our next two encounters. The first is a shiny Skarmory that I find pretty quickly, and I catch her and name her Winry. The next encounter is a Beldum. If you know anything about Beldum, you know that it's a nightmare to catch, since its catch rate is the same as several legendary Pokemon. After hunting forever to find a shiny silver gadget, I miraculously catch it in a love ball of all things a few turns before it would knock itself out by struggling. A true Christmas miracle in October. I name him Honheim and send him to the PC for now. After snagging some new team members, I have to go fight Guzma in the park, but since he only uses bug types, this battle is kind of a joke for my team. Winry is able to power through Galissapod using Fly, and Greed comes in on the Aridos and just slowly chips it down since it can't really touch him. Sorry Guzma, this run is just not your type matchup, bud. On our way to the next trial, I get into a random battle with this fisherman who leads off with a Feebas, which is just such a joke for this point in the game. So Envy Volt switches, knocking the Feebas out, easy 
easily, and I sent out Alphonse as the fisherman sends out a Gyarados. This would normally be a little scary, but Alphonse has charge beam, so we're just going for that. First, the Gyarados uses a resisted Ice Fang, then a Leer, then another Ice Fang, all while we chip it down with charge beams. On the turn it would go down, it uses Aqua Tail. Also, it's raining, and this is the story of how Alphonse died. I'm not sure what I was thinking here, or if I was even paying full attention to the game, but I was kind of excited to use Shift Gear Clink Clang later, so this is a really big feel bad, since it was 100% just my fault. Rest easy in the scrapyard, little gears. I add Hohenheim to the party and go directly to the Mimikyu trial. This fight has always been such a struggle in the past, since Mimikyu gets an Omni Boost and just has a great type, but for the first time, I clearly have an advantage here. I lead off with Envy into the Cloth Goblin, and on turn 1, a Flash Cannon breaks the Mimikyu's disguise while it just goes for a Mimic for some odd reason. The failed Pikachu clone calls in a Haunter and then goes for a Shadow Claw on the next turn which does decent damage, but a Flash Cannon from Envy absolutely snacks on its HP stat. Then Haunter uses Nightshade, dropping my Magnets to about half health, so I click Volt Switch on the next turn as the Mimikyu once again just tries to go for a Mimic, which once again makes no sense here. The Mimikyu drops to the Volt Switch, letting Ed Edward switch in and eventually take the Haunter out with a couple of Shadow Sneaks. For my victory lap, Hohenheim evolves into Matang, and this was 100% the easiest Mimikyu fight I've ever had. I know it's not as difficult as it is in the Ultra games, but I think Mono Steels would crush it in those games too, so we take those kind of wins. Our level cap jumps up by a ton here, so I hunt for my next two shinies, Alolan Sandshrew and Alolan Pikachu, I mean Togedemaru. I name them Scar and Riza respectively, and as a bonus, Edward evolves into Deblade after we catch our regional Pikachu clone. The next part of the game involves us crushing Plumeria in a battle and then infiltrating Po Town, which Team Skull has taken over, and I think the single smartest bit of dialogue in the game comes from this Team Skull grunt saying, I can't get into their town because they have it blocked with a barbacle. He meant to say barricade, but mistook that word for the terribly ugly hand Pokemon, and I think that's pretty brilliant comedy. Definitely better than Skyosi at least. We battle through the Shady House and make our way to Guzma, who for some reason stole a little weasel thing but his team hasn't changed at all since we fought him last in the park, and my team kinda hecks stuff up now, so Envy just solos him. Shortly after returning the weasel, we have to fight Nanu as the Ula Ula Islands Grand Trial, but I forgot to start my recording before fighting him, so just pretend you saw a Sableye get knocked out by Maze, but also almost knock Maze out before sending in his Crocorock and you're up to speed. With Winry in front of the Crocodile, there isn't much it can do, so she sets up a sword stance and mercs it with a single fly. Alolan Persian comes out next, and it has Nasty Plot and Power Gem, so I switch into Greed and start lowering the cat's speed with Rock Tombs while it chips him down with Dark Pulses. When his health gets too low, I switch into Envy and something really strange happens here. Envy is immune to Dark Pulse, which makes absolutely zero sense. I could not tell you why this happened, and it confused me so much that I switched back out into Greed and doubled into Envy again after checking their stats, ability, and held item to make sure something really strange wasn't going on, and sure enough, Envy was once again immune to Dark Pulse. I did the calcs, and this interaction never mattered since Envy would always comfortably live three Dark Pulses while holding an Eviolite, and be able to take the Persian out with two Flash Cannons, but after this fight, I checked the ROM in two different pieces of software and nothing seemed out of place. I sometimes use a code to skip random wild battles when I'm filming certain parts of the game, or if I have to run really far, and maybe that had some weird interaction with Magneton and Dark Pulse, but I legitimately don't know what was happening here. I loaded up a fresh ROM after this battle, and it never happened again. I just felt like I had to show you and talk about it since it technically did benefit me. I normally just would have reset here because this is so unnatural, but the last time I hard saved was after catching the shiny Togedemaru, so this oopsie is just on me. I'm sorry about that one. After this, the main plot of the game starts to unfold and we have to infiltrate the Aether Paradise because I was wrong and it's not the happiest place on earth, it's actually evil. Which like, Disney World is also called the happiest place on earth and it might also be evil so I guess we should just stop calling things the happiest place on earth. Whatever. There are some challenging battles in here but for the sake of time, let's skip to the important ones. Guzma. This is not a real fight, I have a Skarmory on my team, we murk him. Now we have to fight Lusamine who kidnapped her own daughter which some people People might just consider good parenting, right? I mean, her daughter has been roaming around these incredibly dangerous islands, carrying a Pokemon that sometimes randomly explodes with energy. Whatever, we'll play along. We have to fight her to stop her from doing something evil, but I didn't read the story text, so I'm not sure what. She leads off with Clefable, and Maze has recently learned Iron 
overhead and it crits, so it's a one shot. She sends out my Lodic next, so we pivot into Envy on a safeguard, and on the next turn, a Hydro Pump does over 50% to my magnets and discharge is not even enough to KO, leaving me in a terrible spot. I pivot into Winry to avoid Envy being KO'd, but Lucimine just goes for a flail randomly. A Hydro Pump on the next turn once again does well over 50%, but I'm able to get off a fly and that's enough to take this Water Serpent out. I always underestimate this Pokemon, and if Lucimine had better AI, she could absolutely throttle my team most of the time because I'm never making optimal plays against it. After my Lottie goes down, she really has no more threats left. Miss Magius is walled by Greed and chipped down slowly. Beware is a fighting type, but I have Edward, Honeheim, and Winry who can all easily check it. So by using Edward to force baby doll eyes, I'm able to safely pivot into Envy and take it out with Volt Switches. Then her dancing plants just die to Winry. Checkmate, Lusamine. Looks like I get to keep your daughter. Nope, that's a terrible sentence. Scratch that one out. I'm pretty sure that makes me the villain of the story. I'm not really sure what's going on, but Lusamine disappears into a different dimension and now we can finish the game. With Evil Mommy hopefully gone for good, we can head to Pony Island, our final island to conquer. In Pony Wilds, I find a Dust Stone, meaning Edward finally gets to evolve into Aegislash, making him one of the best offensive and defensive Pokemon I have access to. We head into the Vast Pony Canyon, and wouldn't you know it, I get bamboozled by these games once again. In the Ultra games, you battle Hapu at the very end of Pony Island. In these games, you do it right the hell now. And once again, her Pokemon are stronger than the level cap of my next totem battle. I was not prepared for this at all, but thankfully, Winry basically hardwalls her entire team. I could go turn by turn, but essentially, I switch into Winry on turn one, use Swords Dance until her attack is maxed out, and then wipe Hapu's team with Fly. It's probably the same strategy I would have used at the end of Pony Island as well, since our team would just body bag mine otherwise, but still, this was an unpleasant surprise. Making our way through the canyon, Hohenheim evolves into Metagross, giving me another super powerful Pokemon, then right after that, Envy evolves into Magnezone, so my team is firing on all cylinders. We enter the lair of the Coma Otral, and it's normally a nightmare to prepare for, but between Winry just having a stupid high defense stat and a great type for the fight, and Edward having an immunity to fighting and being able to swallow Coma O's other attacks while in shield form, we power through this fight pretty easily. It's a little stally at the beginning, so I won't go turn by turn, but Winry is able to chunk the tribal dragon with a fly, and then a Shadow Ball and a Shadow Snake from Edward are enough to pick up the KO, while Hakomo, whose moveset is Sky Uppercut, Autonomize, Work Up and Bide, legitimately can't even touch him. It's not a hard fight. Now we reach the climax of the game where the bad goblin that Lily has been carrying around the entire time evolves into some sort of bat deity after we play some sick tunes for it with our flutes. Then it opens up a portal to another dimension, and instead of just not going in there and moving on with our lives, we end up going in there because of course. I won't lie, the Ultra Space setting is actually really cool in these games, and I don't remember this at all from the last time I played them. But we find Lusamine down here, and she fuses with Nihiligo to become Ultra Lusamine, which is actually kind of sick. So we have to battle her to once again make sure she understands that she no longer has parental rights, and this battle can be a doozy. Every single one of her Pokemon gets a stat boost, and she has better AI. I lead off with Hohenheim into her Clefable, and a Meteor Mash is a clean one-shot. She then sends in her Miss Magius, so I pivot into Envy as the ghost just goes for a pain split. Okay, maybe I take back what I said about having a better AI. Envy Volt switches into Edward, and then on the next turn, Edward also takes a pain split, but retaliates by annihilating the ghost with a shadow ball. My Lodic comes out next, and I think my only real way to get around this Titan is by stalling out its Hydro Pump PP. So Edward protects as it just goes for a safeguard, which is probably the worst case scenario here. I switch into Hohenheim, who gets dropped to just 27 HP from a Hydro Pump, and now it's a game of switching and protecting protecting and making smart plays. I pivot into Greed who takes 70% and then protect on the next turn to stall another Hydro Pump PP. We pivot again into Winry who takes a ton of damage and at the end of the turn Lusamine's safeguard wears off. I make a risky play here assuming she will set her safeguard back up since the AI seems to prioritize it and roost with Winry which pays off and now we just have one more PP to burn. I switch into Envy who drops to 29 HP from the pump but from here the only attack Milotic has left to do damage is Flail. So I Volt switch into Winry, set up three layers of spikes and switch back into Envy and take the Serpent out with a Metal Sound boosted Discharge. With the Milotic down, she sends out Beware who just cannot touch Edward, so we dumpster it with a Flash Cannon. I also think her Dancing Plant can't touch Edward, so I stay in and go for a Shadow Ball, but I grossly underestimated how hard a boosted Petal Dance would hit Edward when he was in Blade form, and he drops to just 7 HP. We grab the KO, but that really could have been a terrible mistake if the Flower had gotten a higher roll or a crit. Still, we beat Ultra Lucimine 
fighting to save the Alola region, she unfuses with her jellyfish, some more story stuff happens, and most importantly, we can now move on and finally beat the game. Before we can actually head to the Pokemon League, we have to fight Gladion one final time, and his team is actually pretty good now. We lead with Hohenheim into his Crobat and just drop it out of the sky on turn one with the Zen Headbutt after taking a weak acrobatics. Gladion sends in Sovali next, who is a fire type thanks to us picking Rowlet, so we switch into Greed and wear it down slowly with Metal Bursts and Stone Edges while it fails to do any meaningful damage to my Shield Boy. Lucario is sent out next, so I switch into Edward who gets in for free since he's immune to Aura Sphere. Then on the next turn, he takes a whopping 22 points of damage from a Corkscrew Crash and one-shots the Metal Dog with a Shadow Ball. Weavile's Gladion's last Pokemon and Envy is able to easily switch in and take it out with a single Flash Cannon. Then, as if this game really likes to cram important battles back to back, we have to fight Hao at the summit of the Pokemon League. His team is very dangerous now, so we have to play this one carefully. I lead off with Hohenheim into his Alolan Raichu, and a Thunderbolt on turn 1 does an insane amount of damage as a Meteor Mass chunks the Raichu to around half. I switch into Maze for the immunity on the next turn and drop the rat with a Sucker Punch. Flareon surprisingly comes out next, so we easily one-shot it with our newly learned Earthquake, and then Hao sends out his Kamala, and I'm not gonna lie, I constantly forget this is a Pokemon. I switch into Winry to dodge an Earthquake, and to further prove I forgot this was a Pokemon, I go for a Toxic, which you cannot do since this Pokemon is always asleep thanks to its ability. Neat. Winry sets up three layers of spikes, and after some healing with Roost, a couple of flies take the Koala out. Primarina is Hal's last Pokemon, and as is tradition, I switch into Greed to take the Water Z move with his Sturdy. Then it's a pivot play into Envy, who takes way too much from a Sparkling Aria, so on the next turn, instead of discharging, we outpace and go for a Volt Switch into Edward, who also takes way too much from this Little Mermaid. The Prim is only left with about 20 HP though, so we stay in and Edward drops it with the Shadow Sneak, winning us the battle and finally unlocking the Elite Four. I take some time to run Calc, strategize, and make some tweaks to my team's movesets and EV spreads, but the six we've been using is the six we're gonna rock with. Scar was close to being good enough to add, but I didn't really have a great slot to put him in, so it's Hohenheim, Envy, Greed, Maze, Use, Winry, and Edward all the way, baby. I enter the Pokemon League and we're either going to win the run or fail miserably here. Attempt 24 has been solid, so I have no nothing but faith. We start off by challenging Olivia first since she'll be easy experience. I lead off with Envy into her Relicanth and a Discharge just fries this fish in one shot. She sends in her Proba Pass, so I Volt Switch into Winry to avoid an Earth Power, and from this point I'm gonna stop going turn by turn since once Winry hits the field, the battle really drags on. The short version is we set up three layers of spikes after getting paralyzed and stay healthy in front of the Probo Pass with Roosts and then start roaring. We do this until her Alolan Golem is drug out, letting me get a free switch into Maze who is able to one shot the rest of her team with Earthquake and Iron Head. Maze was always going to be a monster in this battle, we just had to get him in for free. Next, I challenge Kahili, and this battle should be a breeze, but actually her Mandibuzz looks like it's going to be a nightmare to break. I lead off with Envy into her Skarmory, and this time it's my side of the field that gets spiked. I manage to take the Skarmory out after she full restores it, and then she sends in her Mandibuzz. I go to pivot into Winry, and this is when I realize that just like I did before the Principal Emily fight, I forgot to heal my team. This wouldn't matter a ton normally since Mandibuzz can't really hit Winry for any meaningful damage, but she's also paralyzed, meaning that the flatters that Mandibuzz will go for are so much more effective. So Winry stalls for a bit and eventually toxics the Mandibuzz, and I switch into Envy hoping to get in on a Brave Bird, but instead, the Mandibuzz goes for a flatter into my already confused Pokemon. So Envy is confused upon switching in, and I double back out into Winry and decide to start roaring to break this cycle, and two cannon is dragged out. I pivot into Hohenheim on a Screech that he's immune to, and on the next turn we get off a strong meteor mash but are burned by the bird's beak blast. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot that that was a move. Kahili then makes a surprise play and switches her toucan out for her salsa bird, so I bring Hohenheim back for Greed who easily snacks on its revelation dance and is able to pick it off with a metal burst into a rock slide. From this point, Kahili switches back into her mandibuzz, so to save your sanity and mine, just know that I toxic stalled it with Winry until I found an opening to switch into Envy who was able to clean up the rest of her team with discharges. Not healing Winry's paralysis made that battle so much more grindy than it needed to be. I make 100% sure to heal up my team, make a small tweak to Hohenheim's moveset, and then challenge Hala. I have a little bit of PTSD from having to reset so many times against this man, but now our team is actually in a really good spot against him. We lead with Hohenheim into his Hariyama, 
and go for an agility on turn 1. The sumo fighter responds with a knockoff, but it only does around 25% since Hohenheim is holding a Culberberry to reduce the damage. From this point on, it's checkmate. Zen Headbutt drops the Hariyama, Psychic takes out the Primate, Beware, and Crabomitable, and one final Zen Headbutt mercs the Polyrath, meaning Hohenheim just one-shot Hala's entire team. Hohenheim just has really good stats for mixed attacking, and Psychic lets me grab one-shots that I couldn't otherwise get on the Bear and the Crab. This slaughter felt like such a good moment of justice for me, you don't even know. I relished this moment. The final member we have to challenge is Acerola, and I'm going to cut straight to the point here. Edward dumpsters her entire team. You might not think he should be able to since he's pretty slow and also a ghost type, but now that we have King Shield and can switch back and forth between Blade and Shield form freely, he's able to take hits and then one-shot her entire team with Shadow Balls. The only Pokemon that even stood a chance at one-shotting him through his Shield form was her Palisand with its Ghost Z-move, but Edward always outspeeds the Sandcastle and one-shots it. I do switch into Envy at the end of the fight to deal with her Drift Limb, but that's more just a hedge against an ominous wind boost than anything else. Now with the Elite Four beaten, there's only one person standing in my way of claiming the throne as the champion of the Alola region, and that's Kukui and his hot Professor Bod. His team is strong and well-rounded, so let's see if we've got what it takes. I challenge him and lead off with Winry into his Lycanroc, and as usual, I set up three layers of spikes while the dog sets up its own hazard in the form of stealth rocks and starts going for stone edges. We stall his dog out of stone edges by roosting and protecting, and once it's out, Winry roars it into a Ninetales. This gives me a free switch into Hohenheim as the fox sets up a safeguard, then we're able to dodge a blizzard and drop it on the next turn with a meteor mash. Incineroar comes out next, and this is Kukui's biggest threat against my team. Its fire Z-move will always one-shot basically every remember since rocks will always break sturdy, and its flare blitz damage is also absurd. I protect with Hohenheim to negate most of the Z-move's damage, then pivot into Greed to tank the incoming flare blitz. Greed should bait the Incineroar to go for cross chomp, so I pivot into Edward for free, get off a King Shield to harshly lower its attack stat on the next turn, then pivot back out into Greed, but the ultimate shield is broken as the cat gets a critical hit flare blitz, taking him out. I take this opportunity to get a free switch into Maze, who is able to avenge his fallen teammate with an earthquake, body bagging this evil cat. Snorlax comes out so I switch into Winry to dodge a high horsepower, and then go for a roar bringing out Braviary. I go for another roar, but Kakui's bird is faster than mine, and whirlwinds Winry out before she gets to move. Hohenheim comes in, and a Meteor Mash chunks the bird on the next turn as it whirlwinds again, this time into Envy. A Discharge finishes the bird off and lures Snorlax back out, its health getting lower and lower from the Spikes chip. I pivot into Winry again to dodge the high horsepower, and roar the Snorlax into Magnezone this time, letting me make the checkmate play of switching in Maze for the immunity to the Magnet's electric type attacks. Three Earthquakes over the next three turns take out the Magnezone, the Snorlax, and finally the Lycanroc, winning us the battle and the run. Wow. Attempt 24 really went off, only losing a clink to my own misplay and then greed to a critical hit in the champion battle is nuts. I'm not gonna lie, this run was really frustrating in the early game when I was just unable to beat Hala for almost two weeks, but in the end, it was a blast and I'm glad I was able to get it done. After Hollow, the game really opened up and got a lot more winnable, but that grind was just so insane. I promise I won't go so long between uploads anymore, that was just brutal. If you enjoyed this and the effort that went into it, please leave a like because it helps out so much and don't forget to check if you're subscribed. If you're not, you definitely should because we are on our way to that 100k milestone and I have so much planned for Scarlet and Violet. My next video is going to be an extra special one and something a little different that I think you will all love. So look forward to that. Also, let me know who you think the MVP of this run was. I think there is a clear answer here, but I want to know yours. Okay, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for all of your continued support. My name is Vivid, and I'm kind of done here, so I have to leave. Bye.